Many communities have a coming-of-age ritual. Some are as simple as killing a lion or bear with only your hands. For Jets and Linux programmers, it's much more difficult. In this video, we'll go over how to build the Linux kernel and modules onboard the Jetson itself. This is a four-step process. First, download the kernel sources. Then we modify the kernel configuration file, which tells the make system which features to include. Next, we build the kernel and modules. Finally, we install our new found friends. This is an introduction to the subject. It is meant for use by people who have the need to rebuild the kernel or compile modules to include features that may be missing from the default distribution. This simple method won't support advanced kernel features, such as secure boot or over-the-air updates. If you're new to building the Jetson Linux kernel, don't use a system with important work. Practice on a separate drive instead. Recovery is usually simple, but a bad state can be tricky to fix. For a Jetson Orin Nano Super, flash a new SD card. For an AGX Orin, use a separate NVMe SSD and boot from the EMMC if needed. Building is safe, but installing changes can conflict with the system. I've written some convenient scripts to help us on our quest. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Jetson Orin Kernel Builder. Let's clone that repository and switch to its directory. Scrolling down a little, there's an overview you can read through and some notes. Make sure to read through those before you start. We are going to store our source in the usual place on a Linux system, user source. I'll squirrel that away for later. We will be retrieving the kernel source file from the Jetson Linux archive. Scroll down to the driver package BSP sources. That's the file we are downloading. BSP means board support package. We're using 36.4.3 on this machine. Different versions can be found on the archive page. These scripts are for Jetpack 6. Let's use our script to go get the kernel sources and install them into user source. Then let's take a look at user source. You can see we picked up a few new directories and files. The kernel is in the kernel directory and the source is in kernel jammy source. When we installed the sources, we also created a .config file which contains the configuration of the currently running system. There are hundreds of flag and module settings. I'm not afraid. Yeah. You will be. Let's run Unix name. Minus A gives us all information. Minus R gives the kernel release. The kernel release is what is called version magic or ver magic. This represents the kernel version and the local version. We'll need to remember the local version. The ver magic string is embedded in both the kernel and modules. When you load a module, the kernel checks its ver magic against its own. If they match, they're compatible and the module loads smoothly. If not, the kernel blocks it to prevent crashes or glitches. With that in mind, let's edit the .config file. There are different ways to edit the file. I wouldn't recommend editing it by hand. There are a lot of module interdependencies that the editor will take care of for you. Here's an editor that runs from the command line. When we downloaded the kernel sources, we generated the config file from the running system. Then the local version was set from the version magic. The local version string is under general setup local version. Don't forget the dash that precedes the string. I won't change anything here. We'll do that in another editor. There are hundreds of flags and settings. An important function is search, which you can access with forward slash. Let's look for the CH341 module, a popular USB serial device. This shows its current setting and dependencies. Very useful. Let's exit out of this and go to another editor. We'll use a GUI editor. GUI, GUI, yummy, yummy. Here we are asked which version of OpenGL to install for. If you don't know the answer, select the default, which is number one. This application functions similarly to the one we looked at previously. The local version string is under general setup local version. Double click on the entry to change it. Remember to add a dash to the beginning. This is correct, so we will leave it alone. 
Let's search for the CH341 module. It finds it. The summary says that we can compile it as a module, so select M for module in the value entry. We save our changes and quit. It's time to build the kernel image. This will take a while. When it's done, the path to the new image is shown, along with the path to the build log. Let's save the location of the new image so that we can access it later. I'll create a new file, a little note, and drop the path in. Make sure to save it before closing the window. Now we are ready to build the kernel modules. This will take a while. We can install all of the modules we just built. More than likely, that's not what we want to do. We built the modules so that we could get the CH341 module. So I will say no here. And it shows us some instructions for if we want to install the modules later. It also saves the instructions in the current directory. Everything is built. Now we are ready to install it. Again. I'm not afraid. Yeah. You will be. I wrote a script to help get module information. Let's run it and search for CH34. This appears to be a likely candidate. The module will be named CH341. The module flag is config USB serial CH341. We can cobble this together and check to see if our module is where we expect it. There it is. We can also use the tool to ask about a given flag. This gives a more concise listing of the module information. Since we know the name of the module file, we can do a search in user source kernel to find the path. The module path indicates the path from the top level of the source tree. The top level is user source kernel kernel jammy source. The system module path is in a known location to which you append the module path for the full path name. To insert the module into the system, copy the source to the destination using sudo, then depmod minus a to update module dependencies. The copy command comes out looking a little messy. I've written a script to help with that. First, let's copy the module from the source directory. You can build the path from the information presented in module info. Put it in the current directory. Now we use install module author, which will make a script to install the module. This is useful when you have other systems you want to install the module on. We need to pass the name of the module without the .ko and the module path without the file name. The script will generate a script and place it in the current directory. Finally, we use the generated script to install the module. We can make sure the module is loaded using list modules. Installation complete. Let's install our new kernel. The kernel image is in the boot directory. First, we make a copy of the original kernel, then copy the new kernel over. Next, we modify the ext Linux file, which tells the bootloader which kernel image to load. We add an entry so that we have a fallback in case something untoward happens. Finally, we reboot and watch our new goodness appear. I will edit the ext Linux file first. Let's make a backup. Now let's edit the file. 
We will be clever and follow the instructions on testing a custom kernel. The image is in the parent directory, boot. Let's make a copy of it. The first part of the prophecy is fulfilled. Now we uncomment the menu settings and save the file. I'll add this bit so things go smoothly. Don't forget to save the file. Close these up. Now let's copy our new image into the boot directory. Remember that we saved the location of the new kernel when we built it. With the kernel image in place, it is the moment of truth. We reboot the Jetson. When we are at the boot splash screen, we are given the choice to boot from the primary kernel, which is the new one we just installed, or the backup. We will be brave and choose the new one. If you get to the login screen, most likely everything is loading correctly. Let's take a look at the version magic. Looks good. There you have it. Just that simple, just that quick. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.